If we're honest, we're all a little fearful to let people know how we really feel and think. And many of us have good reason for it. Some of us fear being misunderstood, others for damaging a relationship, or even feeling rejection. And if you're anything like me, you just don't want to feel vulnerable. I get it. But if there's one thing I know, when we don't have honest spaces to share, we run from each other instead of towards each other, and we don't grow. And we all want to grow, right? We need safe spaces to process tough and awkward conversations, to push through our fears, discomfort, and apathy. And when we do this, we not only become better people, but we also create positive change. Friends, my name is Trevor Jenkins, and I am the founder of Unfiltered Conversations, which is an amazing experience and framework that guides people through discussing sensitive topics. And this podcast is a continuation of those topics. And as the founder, my desire is to answer thought-provoking questions by sharing real-life stories. And my hope is that you would engage these questions and share your own stories as well. But most importantly, that you would create positive change. Welcome to the Unfiltered Conversation Podcast. Do you feel fulfilled at your job? If there was a list of the top 10 scariest experiences people chose to avoid in life, I'm almost certain changing careers would be on that list. Changing careers is scary, and most people don't do it unless they're forced to. Yet the irony about this is, as many people are fearful to change careers, they're also dissatisfied with what they do and would do something else if given the chance. According to a Gallup poll, of our country's approximate 100 million full-time employees, 51% aren't engaged at work, meaning they feel no real connection to their jobs, and thus they tend to do the bare minimum. So why do they stay? Well, there are many valid reasons for this. For example, I recently asked my friend's wife, what does she like best about her current job? With two children in elementary, she responded that the best part of her job is the short commute and proximity to her children, should something happen at school. While she knows she doesn't find fulfillment in her job professionally, right now she feels that staying in her current position affords her the ultimate fulfillment, time and flexibility for her children. I get it. Also, jobs are hard to find. And these days, a good paying job is even harder to find. With the cost of living going up every year while job wages have maintained the same for decades. For most people, changing careers feels too risky. Especially when you throw in kids, a mortgage, and good benefits in the mix. And lastly, let's be honest. Oftentimes, doing meaningful work means making less money. However, research has shown that people still want to do something meaningful for their work. Because the average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over the course of a lifetime, which translates to one-third of their life. Laura Fortgang, best-selling author, life coach, and TED Talk speaker, makes a compelling argument why people hold on to careers they're not satisfied with. One major reason people don't change careers, Laura says, is because most people don't feel qualified to do something else than what they've been doing. When we are in doubt, Unfortunately, we cling on to our resumes. So many people are unhappy at work, yet they're not sure what type of work will make them happy because it's so difficult to look beyond what their resumes qualify them for. Laura is so great at helping people find job satisfaction by getting them to understand who they want to be at work instead of focusing on what they want to do. Laura shares more about this in one of her TED Talks. Let's take a listen. And today the research shows that to be happy at work, people want to be engaged. They want to have mastery over their subject matter. They do want to know that what they do matters more than the paycheck they get. So if we know that, why is it that 50% of us can't figure out what we want to do with our life? Well, I think it's because when we're in doubt, we look to our resume. We look to our credentials, what we're qualified to do. And what we're qualified to do is not necessarily what we're meant to do. It isn't necessarily what's gonna bring us satisfaction. Think of an egg, if you will. From a little hummingbird egg to an ostrich egg, all of them are a roundish shell. 
For people, that shell are our credentials, our track record, our accomplishments, and our resume. A lot of us get attached to that shell. It becomes our identity, and that's what makes it hard to change. But to get to the good stuff, you have to crack the egg open, because inside is the yolk, the golden center. That's where the DNA is. That's what determines how each egg is unique. And for people, I call that yolk their life blueprint. So everything that can be taken away is the shell, the status, your identity, what people think of you, the perks, the salary. But what can't be taken away is the yoke, and that's where the discovery of career satisfaction can happen. Maybe it's more important to understand that career satisfaction doesn't come from what you do. It comes from who you get to be while you're doing that job. Who your job allows you to be, that's where the happiness comes from. So the shell is what you do, but the yoke is who, who you get to be. When I was in my 20s, I wanted nothing more than to be a Broadway star. Well, I did reasonably well. I mean, I got my union card, I worked in reputable theaters, and I gave myself five years to make it, and at year eight, I was still waiting on tables. And so I grew despondent, I really did. I, I was almost suicidal over the fact that I thought that I failed at the only thing I ever wanted. Why hadn't this dream come true for me? I'd worked so hard, I invested so much. 10 years after I left show business, I had an epiphany about this. I remembered a scholarship that I was up for, for an acting program where they asked me, what would be possible if you were successful as a performer? And the answer came to me in a flash. But I knew it was like the right answer, the Miss America pageant answer, the eldest child answer, the I'm going to get the scholarship answer. So I went up to the mic and I said, well, if I were successful as a performer, people would see me on stage and be moved to change something in their life. That answer got me the scholarship. But it wasn't until 10 years later when I realized what I really had said. The performer was the shell. Causing change from the stage, that was the yoke. That was me. So I hadn't failed at my dream after all. I just suffered from a misinterpretation of my dream. I needed to allow the dream to change form. And I think that's what's wrong for a lot of us when we can't figure it out, is no one's taught us to pull the dream apart and understand the true significance of it. We're told we can be anything we want to be when we grow up. When we go to pick that college major, though, the question changes from what do you want to be when you grow up to how you're going to make a living at that. We haven't been taught what our dreams and machinations really mean to our career trajectory. Laura didn't become a Broadway star, but she's definitely changing lives from the stage. Career satisfaction doesn't come from what you do at your job. It comes from who you get to be while you're doing that job. For those of you who are listening, I really want you to take at least 10 minutes sometime today. Get a pen and a pad and jot down your thoughts. And ask yourself this question. Who do you get to be at work? I made myself do the same thing. I personally found Laura's message to be very insightful because we spend so much time trying to figure out what we want to do when it comes to work. But our job satisfaction really comes from who we get to be at work. For years, I questioned if I chose the right career as a pastor. I truly believe being a pastor is a calling, but there has been many moments I felt unfulfilled even though I was doing meaningful work. Have you ever felt like this before? I have an entrepreneurial spirit. I like to build and create things, and I thought I would be better in the business world. For close to a decade, I felt like I was meant to lead something, but I never wanted to be a lead pastor of a church. I always knew that. Yet, because I didn't want to be a lead pastor, I always felt limited in what I was doing while working for a church. Many times I felt restless and dissatisfied, always looking for the next big challenge. But then I began to ask myself the question, what if, like Laura, I was misinterpreting my dream? All these years I was trying to find job satisfaction in what I was doing, rather than thinking about who do I get to be. So I asked myself the question, who do I get to be at work? I wanted a job that allowed me to be creative. I wanted a job that allowed me to lead and also allowed me to be collaborative, bringing people together. I wanted a job that allowed me to champion diversity and how people are unique. I wanted a job that would challenge me and allow me to challenge others as well. 
And also, I wanted a job that would allow me to be open about my faith. It was then I realized being a pastor allows me to do all these things. As a pastor, I got to lead, collaborate, champion diversity, challenge others, and to be open about my faith. Was I misinterpreting my dream this whole time? I was so focused on what I was doing instead of being grateful for who I got to be while I was doing it. Now, will I always be a pastor for the rest of my life? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But what I do know, and I think it's true for you as well, our job satisfaction doesn't come by what we do at work. It comes from who we get to be while we're working. So if you find yourself restless and unfulfilled at work, focus on who you get to be at work. There may lie the answer if you really enjoy your job and if you just need a new perspective. Or maybe it's time to make a change. Friends, thank you for listening to the Unfiltered Conversation podcast. Please join the discussion on our Facebook page listed as Unfiltered Conversations Community. Also, if you're listening from iTunes or Google Play, don't forget to rate us and leave a review. Again, I would love to hear from you and your thoughts on the topic of the day. Until next time, let's keep the conversation going.